Yippee ki yay, movie lovers, it's Jan here, and today I'm breaking down the amazing new Avengers Infinity War trailer for Marvel Easter eggs and other cool details you might have missed. If you're here for the first time, I do regular Marvel videos, and to celebrate the new trailer, I'm kicking off a new round of my Infinity War giveaway for all my subscribers. Just leave me a comment below about the new trailer, or any requests you have for Infinity War videos. Obviously, speculation and potential spoilers ahead for Infinity War. The new trailer introduces more backstory for Thanos, with Gamora revealing her father's chilling mission. The entire time I knew him, he only ever had one goal, to wipe out half the universe. If he gets all the Infinity Stones, he can do it with the snap of his fingers. Just like that. And that snap is a reference to the classic Infinity Gauntlet storyline where Thanos literally snaps his fingers when he's wearing the gauntlet, and half of the universe disappears. This is an awesome easter egg, although we might not actually get Thanos' exact snap moment in the movie. For example, we may see the Mad Titan's fingers about to perform that move, followed by a sudden cut to black. Similar to how at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, the camera cut before Cap finished the famous comic book catchphrase, Avengers Assemble. Avengers! Thanos' voiceover is as chilling as his mission, and proves that his view of balancing the universe is a twistedly positive one. The end is near. When I'm done, half of humanity will still exist. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. Notice how Thanos is a glass half full guy. He's pointing out how half of humanity will still exist in perfect balance. Of course, Thanos will need the Time Stone, and we get a terrifying shot of Ebony Moore torturing Doctor Strange. And it instantly brought to mind this scene from the comics where Ebony Moore manipulates Doctor Strange into becoming an unwitting pawn for Thanos. Ebony Moore has the ability to deceive even the strongest of minds, and I think we're going to see Doctor Strange used by Moore in some kind of deception against the Avengers. Thor gets some pretty incredible scenes in the new trailer. We see him with Rocket and Groot on the dwarven planet Nidavellir, where he's gone in search of a new weapon now that he no longer has his hammer Mjolnir. And we get to see an awesome scene where a cape-wearing Thor powers up and harnesses either his own lightning powers or the powers of something else, perhaps an Infinity Stone, to create his new weapon. It's not shown in the trailer, but various tie-in toys have confirmed that the new weapon will be Stormbreaker, and the handle looks to be made from wood that Groot donates from his own body. Stormbreaker is an axe-like hammer which in the comics was originally wielded by Beta Ray Bill. Bill's a popular comic book character who, after proving himself worthy enough to wield Thor's normally unliftable hammer, was given the new hammer Stormbreaker by Odin. And like Mjolnir, Bill's hammer was created by the dwarves of Nidavellir. In the comics, Stormbreaker had the same powers as Thor's Mjolnir, so it'll be interesting to see how Thor uses it in Infinity War, and if there are any differences with his original hammer. In the previous trailer, we saw the Black Order attempt to extract the Mind Stone from Vision's forehead, and as I predicted then, the Avengers have taken Vision to Wakanda to try and safely remove it. In this shot, Wakandan high-tech genius Shuri is using her Kamoyo beads to project an image of Vision, who you can see lying down at the bottom of the screen. She looks to be showing this image to Bruce Banner, whose glasses you can see flash by just to the side of the shot. Shuri seems to be working out, or actually even showing Banner, how she can extract the Mind Stone from Vision while keeping him alive. We know from the Avengers Infinity War Prelude comic and the Black Panther post credit scene that Shuri has developed tech in Wakanda that removed the Hydra programming from Bucky's brain. So it's not surprising that the Avengers would call on her again for her brilliance at inventing and using cutting-edge tech, this time to try to help Vision. As was hinted at in the first trailer, Bruce Banner will be getting into Tony's Hulkbuster armour. And I really liked this shot of the Hulkbuster standing tall and Falcon and War Machine flying past behind him. But later it looks like the Hulkbuster might not be strong enough to withstand the Outrider attack, as we see him getting overwhelmed. If you're worried about Bruce Banner's chances of survival, well I think he's probably going to get out of this one, because a recent toy shows Bruce Banner hulking out while inside the Hulkbuster. Also, the first trailer showed a Hulk without any armour fighting on the Wakandan battlefield. Hopefully an angry Hulk will be able to take out the Outriders swarming all over him at this point. 
This flashback shows Thanos and his army conquering Gamora's people, with the Mad Titan taking a young Gamora away from her family to raise as his own. Remember that in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies we've seen how Gamora is very much Thanos' favourite, which really hurt Nebula when they were growing up together. In a recent EW interview, Josh Brolin said that although Thanos uses his adoptive daughter Gamora as a tool for his own gain, he does feel affection for her, and we'll see the evolution of their relationship over the course of the film in flashback scenes like this one. After all, conquering other places and races and taking away some of their youngsters was all part of Thanos' grand plan, which we'll see snap into place in Infinity War. The fact that Gamora is Thanos' favourite may well mean that, in his eyes, her betrayal of all he stands for is simply unbearable. This is one of the many reasons I believe the Mad Titan will sacrifice Gamora by the end of Infinity War, and I talk about all the clues pointing to her demise in my new Infinity War Death Theory video. Ok, let's talk Iron Man. We get to see a bit more of his suit capabilities when his foot thrusters convert into a supercharged rocket booster as he zooms up to the circle of death which we know from previous promos has Spider-Man on board. The machine heads out into space and we later see it smash onto a reddish orangey brown coloured planet, and in the background there's a ton of wreckage. This planet or moon is Thanos' homeworld, Titan. As well as flashback scenes with Gamora, we're likely going to see flashbacks to Thanos' earlier life on Titan. Recently, Kevin Feige explained we'll learn that Titan's population went extinct because of things that Thanos thought he could help prevent, but he was not allowed to do anything about them. And after that mass extinction, Thanos vowed not to let it happen again. Now, in the background of the planet, there are various giant objects strewn around which are likely left over from Titan's destruction. In fact, I wonder whether they might be parts of a giant machine. Remembering Guardians of the Galaxy, the Collector introduced us to the power of the Infinity Stones, and we saw a Celestial destroying a whole planet. It might be that something similar happened on Titan, and Celestials attacked Thanos' homeworld. Recently, the Russo brothers said we should prepare for a lot of crying in the cinema when we watch Avengers Infinity War, and Kevin Feige has also said we will be getting real character deaths. And in this new trailer, I think we get the biggest hint that Iron Man might actually die. Listen to Thanos and watch who it cuts back to. I hope they remember you. Tony's looking pretty beaten down by this point, with his armour broken, and Thanos' words obviously echo the fact that Iron Man kick-started the whole of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I also think it's interesting that the Marvel Studios intro logo was zoomed right in on the R when it came on in this trailer, and right there bang in the centre are two pictures of Tony Stark, a subtle hint perhaps that he's at the core of this movie. We've also had all the Soul Stone promo art teases with Iron Man in the middle of the Soul Stone, and I'm getting a feeling that Marvel could want Infinity War to come full circle back to the very first movie in the franchise, Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. has said that he wants to leave on a high, and going out in a blaze of glory in Infinity War would definitely fit that ambition. If Tony Stark really does die, I'm sure there will be a ton of misty eyes in the theatre. Now, the editing in the trailer could, of course, be a bit of classic misdirection. Thanos might be saying this line to someone else, for example Spider-Man, who we saw getting beaten down by Thanos in the first trailer, or perhaps to Thor or Cap, who we also see Thanos attack in the new trailer. By the way, even if Iron Man does die, we're going to see Tony Stark again in Avengers 4, as RDJ's been filming, so we'll either get flashback scenes or some time travel shenanigans that the remaining Avengers do to try to fix the events of Infinity War. So if Iron Man potentially dying wasn't enough for you, the trailer actually immediately cut to Steve Rogers resisting Thanos and the Gauntlet. First of all, it's incredible that Cap is holding Thanos back with just his hands. And that reminds me of how Cap was the only one who managed to make Mjolnir wobble a bit in Thor's hammer lifting contest in Age of Ultron, and also of how Cap held onto the Winter Soldier's helicopter in Civil War. As for Cap's chances against the Mad Titan, well he does have his new shields, which are bound to have some new capabilities we've not yet seen. However, notice in this shot that Cap's right arm is missing its shield, but in this later shot, the shield is back. This could mean simply that these two shots in the trailer are shown in a different order than they appear in the final movie, or it might mean that Cap's arm shields are similar to his triangular shield in the comics. In other words, part of the shield is used to protect himself while the other part splits off to attack a baddie. And I talk in detail about Cap's new shield in my video on that. I am still worried for Cap though, because in the Infinity Gauntlet story when Steve Rogers went up against Thanos, the Mad Titan easily crushed Captain America's shield and then killed him like he was nothing. I'm hoping Cap might hold out better here, but I wouldn't place a bet on his chances of survival. 
Okay, on a more upbeat note, I want to appreciate how awesome this shot of Spidey swinging through the floating wreckage of Titan is. It looks like this scene is from the aftermath of when Thanos throws a moon at the planet, which was recently released in a still. And I imagine the Avengers might have survived this attack, perhaps because Doctor Strange managed to slow down time for himself and the other heroes as the moon landed on the surface. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories on the new trailer. What's got you excited and who's got you worried? Also leave me any requests or questions you have about the trailer which I'll follow up in another video. You can leave those in the comments or tweet me at Jan underscore Gilbert or at Flick City. If you enjoyed this, I really appreciate you hitting that like button and sharing the video. The winner of my last Marvel giveaway is on screen now. If that's you, send me a private message with your details and I'll get your prize out to you. And if you want to check out my Infinity War Death Theory video or my other Marvel Theory and trailer breakdowns, tap the screen right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!